What's up and welcome to Catching Up. I'm your host, Mike Janella, and today we're catching up with the Mets' top-ranked pitching prospect at MLB Pipeline, top 100 prospect, Matt Allen. How are you, man? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Happy to talk to you. Uh, and Matt, not Matthew, like we learned in spring training, because that means that you feel like you're in trouble when you hear Matthew, right? Yeah, every time I, every time someone says Matthew, it just it brings back uh, childhood memories of just my mom, probably uh, me, probably doing something stupid and just getting in trouble. So, <laughs> like to be called Matt. All right, so Matt, we'll stick with it. Well, let's jump right into it, Matt. You just came off of your first big league camp, your first major league spring training. What'd you think? I it was everything I was hoping for it to be and more. Um, honestly, I think I liked how well. Um, the coaches and staff really gelled the, the younger guys and, and, and with a lot of the veterans. And again, I think the coolest part was, I think for me, I kind of just felt like I was one of them, you know, first couple of days, you know, get the jitters out first bullpen live, like get the jitters out. But after that, you know, every veteran guy was so good about just making you feel like you were one of them. Um, and, and it was, it was awesome. I think that was probably one of the coolest parts for me, aside from just, who I was around, you know, I was really fortunate to be around, you know, guys like DeGrom and Stroman, Syndergaard, um, you know, a lot of other guys I, I, you know, just not, you know, forget, can't name, but uh, uh, honestly, it was just, it was awesome. Well, that's all we were talking about up here was the you and DeGrom pairing. I mean, once we saw that, everybody was kind of losing their mind. And that was for us. I can't even imagine what it was like for you. I mean, he's you know, best pitcher on the planet. When when did you find out? How did you find out? I know you guys had met before, but when did you learn that you were going to be with him every day, all day to start camp? Um, Ricky Meinhold, uh, the uh, minor league um, pitching coordinator and now um, part assistant uh, big league pitching coach, he texted me at some point like before camp, like during quarantine, something like that, when they sent out the schedule. And he basically said like, yeah, you're going to be, you're going to be following DeGrom, like ask him questions, just talk him to death. Like we've already told him that like, you know, you're going to be asking a lot of questions and you're going to kind of be on him. And so, you know, just feel free to just, just wear him out. I think that was the, that was the phrasing he said was just absolutely wear him out. Um, and so I, I tried to do just that. <laughs> Which is, it's cool. You got that permission, but I mean, is there still any point where you're thinking, am I asking him too many questions? Am I bothering him too much? Or were you guys so cool that it wasn't even a thing? I think originally I was kind of like, I'm going to limit it to like, I think, I think for me, I came up with a list of like, these are my priority questions that I need to get out like first week, first 10 days, whatever it is. And then the ones after that, like they're going to come, to, they're, they're going to come, uh, they're going to come along as, as I think of them. But I, I had a list of, certain specific questions that I was thinking of once I heard made a little list in my room. And then, um, again, at first I, I tried to just kind of feel the situation, you know, like at the end of a bullpen, he'll come up, say like, Hey, how'd you feel good? Like if we're just kind of standing there or, you know, we're standing with the catchers or something, that's when I'll pop a question or two, just be like, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? But at first it, it felt very formal, but after that it was just super casual two way conversation um, and, and he was super good about, you know, asking questions, not like the ones I'm asking, but mainly just like, you know, kind of let me get to know you kind of a deal. Um, but yeah, again, super fortunate. And like you said, even, even throughout spring training, it was like, wow, like I'm it, like, I couldn't even really put it into words. It was just kind of like, keep it cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be chill, man. Be chill. Yeah. Uh, what was some of the stuff you asked him? What were some of your priority questions that you wanted to make sure you got Jacob DeGrom's take on? Uh, mainly mechanical, like mechanical, like, Hey, what do you think for this? Like, what is your cue for your changeup? What is your cue for, you know, if you find yourself, you know, you just, you just threw four straight balls, like what's your reset kind of a deal? Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of mechanical questions. And then that really led to a lot of like a lot of ment a lot, a lot of answers that had to do with the mental game of baseball that he was just kind of like, he was basically his answer every time was just kind of like, I'm going to be me. I'm going to do what's comfortable. And like, once I get out on the mound, like I'm, I'm getting out. So like, I'm not worried about what this is doing, what this is doing. Like that's what the the previous days up until, you know, leading up to the start is for. But one thing he, he stressed was just like, don't overcomplicate things. You know, at the time I was like, 
you know, oh, I'm feeling like I need to do this and this and this. And he just stopped me. He's like, well, like you're, you're really good. Like, don't, don't overcomplicate things. Like just allow the natural process of like growth and, and being here, like just kind of allow it to happen uh, organically and just a lot of really, really good stuff that I felt like really applied to myself, how I think and, and uh, how I can really improve my game. Did he give you any tips on how to keep it simple? Cause after you've had the success he's had, I think it's a little bit easier to say, Hey, I'm me, I'm doing me. But especially nowadays you get so much feedback, so many voices in your head, so much data, so much video, all this stuff. Yeah. What, what did he do to tell you to, you know, to keep what's good, but also, figure out what's just noise. Um, basically start to start like, uh, you know, one thing he stressed is just don't get too caught up in the analytics. Half the time he doesn't even look, he never looks about, you know, what is, what is this? What is that? He's trying to throw every pitch out of the same slot, same arm speed and tunnel it just, just the same. Uh, and so that was probably the a big thing for me. Cause I'm a guy that sometimes when I get into a little bit of a, a little bit of a slump, I'll, I'll go back to the analytics. I'll look at a bunch of starts. And, and his message to me was just like, dude, like you got to remember what got you here. Like these analytics were not always here. Like you just got to be yourself, like whatever feels comfortable to him. Um, you know, he said like, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and, and basically just for him, it's just creating rhythm. Like he's talked about it multiple times. It's creating rhythm with his hands and, and timing. And he said like, you know, like that's my cue, but that might not be it for me. For me, it might be something it could be something like I just need to get the ball out of my glove or whatever. Big thing he stressed was that he only watches himself that he's not, he, anytime he does ever go look at video or he's in a slump, obviously he just reminds himself of who he is, but he's not out there watching. Like, what does this guy do really well? What does this guy do? He's just going like, this is my stuff and I dare you to hit it. And so that message to me was just like, you know, it, it speaks volumes to him being, just the ultimate competitor that when you get out on the mound, that's, that's what you are. Your job is to get the guy out and your job is to put up zeros and keep, keep your team in the ball game. So ultimately you can come out with the dub. However, that, however that happens, you know, whether your mechanics were really good, you had a really good fastball, you know, it's just doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is getting outs. And once he kind of stressed that to me and I watched his outing live VP, like you could really see that, you know, like the next day I'd say, how did, you know, what, how'd you feel this day? And he was like, honestly, I felt like crap. And it's like, well, you would have not, you would have never known that because like, he's just so locked into getting out, so locked into helping the team and speaks volumes for, for why he's as good as he is. What was the dynamic like when he was asking you questions or bringing up things to you? It seemed like it was a good two-way street. Like you said, it wasn't just you question him answer. What kind of stuff did he want to know from you? Uh, Honestly, a lot of a lot of stuff that he was he was telling me would be a lot of jokes. Like he would he would crack with me just about like, hey, like you're late, even though I'd be 15 minutes early. He's like, I showed up 15 minutes earlier. Like you need to get here earlier. Just kind of as like a joke. Uh, like I said, just a lot of friendly joking. Kind of, I would say, just kind of break me in a little bit. Um, but we talked about like we talked a little bit about like, oh, what'd you feel when you were throwing, you know, in the land this day or whatever. Just just a bunch of kind of a bunch of stuff like that about the, you know, when we saw each other previous, as opposed to like, well, what are you feeling now? If you're feeling a little out of sync, like, what do you think that, you know, why do you think that is, um, you know, just a lot of, a lot of questions like that. But I think for him, he understood that keeping it very simple with me and, and saying like, Hey, like once I figured this out, this was the key for me, like try it out and see if you like it. Um, but just, just, a lot of a lot of stuff about like you know when I was in the land throwing with him and like you know what if you feel like you've changed what if you feel like it's gotten better what you know what is your cue for your change up like how does that play and maybe this is a better cue X Y Z you know kind of like that. Jacob wasn't the only one. You mentioned Marcus Stroman, Noah Syndergaard, a lot of good arms in camp that you can pick brains and learn from. Who else were you or what else were you getting from from these guys? I, I heard you say, you know, Marcus was able to give you maybe a new grip on the curve to check out. What was some of the other stuff that you took away from from the rest of camp with the big guys? So uh, for for Stroman, for sure, we we talked about we talked about grips like we kind of dove into like this is what I'm feeling. And again, he's a big proponent of like, I'm going to be me. I'm going to I'm going to you know see what what works for other people. I'm going to try it out and then I'm going to make modifications as I like. So he showed me like, hey, if I'm trying to throw it a little harder, I'm going to do this with the ball. If I'm trying to throw it a little slower, 
I'm going to do this for the ball a little more, get me over, you know, so-and-so. Um, but Stroman and I talked a lot about mechanics, what he likes to feel, how he gets the most out of his body, um, and honestly how he's been able to stay healthy and, and been one of the best pitchers in the game for, for a very long time. Um, and then Cindergard, we've kind of – we talked a little bit and then a little bit more. And, again, like today we talked a little bit more about recovery and, like, he's he's big on the hyperbaric chamber and red light therapy and and a lot of that stuff interests me i'm very very interested in a lot of stuff like that not everybody is uh so just mainly talks about that i talked to Syndergaard a little bit about um he was finishing his bullpen or the day after his bullpen and he was doing some dry work and i was like hey what do you like what's your cue with your back leg like i saw you i heard you talking to half about it yesterday what what are you thinking and he'd be like oh you know I'm finding that this really works for me. And, and when things get out of hand, I want to do this. So I'm trying to really feel, um, you know, I'm really trying to feel this into my back leg. And so again, a lot of, a lot of wealth of knowledge. So all that knowledge that you're taking in, you're trying to be a sponge for those couple weeks. And from the beginning of camp to now, I, I've heard you talk about how you found out a lot about yourself, your routine, things that are different, things that have changed. What's kind of the, the biggest takeaway you learned about yourself after you took all this in from everybody else? What's your number one thing coming out of camp going into the summer that you're going to remember? Yeah, it definitely has to do with kind of, it definitely has to do with learning myself. At, at first it, it felt like, um, you know, I was trying to process so much information and I was trying to do, I was trying to just be like, this is what the grounds is what Syndergaard says, what showman said. And again, they're, they're three different people and they, they throw the ball three different ways. Um, obviously, there's similarities in why they're all really good, but at the end of the day, they all have different philosophies. You know, Syndergaard and Stroman, like, they'll look back at the data and be like, oh, I was getting X, Y, Z on my horizontal vertical break, whatever. And, and Cind- or, uh, DeGrom's kind of like, I don't care. Like, I just want to get the guy out. And if you – I'll go up to them and say, hey, changeup felt really good today. And they'll say, oh, well, this is why. Or, hey, feel like I'm a little around the ball. Um, so it's all real different. So at first I kind of was trying to soak in, soak in and like just take in every bit of information. And while it was really good, it was also a little bit counterproductive because I just got really flustered and like trying to be like, well, he's really good and he does this and he does really good and he does this. And it's kind of different. And the, the, the theme, the, over, the overhead theme, and I feel like what's kind of been really successful for me in my past couple outings, bullpens, and, and what's led me to be really confident is just listening, taking the information in, maybe writing it down, kind of doing a little test and trial and being like, okay, like this cue didn't really work for me. And that's okay because it didn't work for me, but it worked for him. Like, um, you know, if the grip showman gave me, uh, if I was throwing and throwing it, it's like, you know, it's okay if that grip doesn't work, even if it, you know, you don't, you, have, you don't have to force it. You don't have to be like, well, because Stroman's so good. Like I have to throw it. It's he stressed it. He's like, dude, you got to find what works for you. And so kind of once I heard that and I started narrowing it down and just started kind of focusing on how I could take little things and not try to not try to change a whole bunch, you know, just try to change little things here, little things there, just little bits of information. I just found that I got into a really good rhythm of like, this is what works for me when I get out of sync. Like it's, it's, you know, let's die, you know, let's, let's do this, you know, like let's, when I'm getting out of, out of sync, I'm missing, you know, like let's focus on this, like an external, an external cue. That's my big thing is like, I need an external cue. I need, you know, a change of sight. I need whatever. Um, so I think for me, it's really about listening to the information, trying it. And if it doesn't work, it, it doesn't work. Like that's okay. But I, if I find that one thing that really, really works, like a real, the good change up to you, it's like, perfect. Like I'm going to stick with that. Don't divert from it. Like just because, you know, so-and-so says, Oh, this is what I do. It's like, if this is what's really comfortable for me right now, it's like, cool, keep it, you know, and be confident and you're, you know, you're good. That's what I think a lot of people don't realize is even when you are learning from a Jacob DeGrom, he's the only one of him that there is. There's only one Marcus Stroman. So you can take their knowledge, but you got to, you got to Matt Allen it up to make it applicable to yourself. And that's, that's when you start clicking with everything. Yeah, for sure. And that was the, that was a little bit of the struggle at first. And I had a fair share of talks with Ricky Meinhold about it. Just about, well, like this, this is what he said. This is what he said. This is what he said. And, you know, it kind of just boiled down to you got to find what works for you and like what your reset is. And that was a big theme for camp was like, look, if you want to be in the big leagues, like you can't go batter or batter and then you're back in the count. It's like you got to make pitch to pitch adjustments. 
you got to make two pitch adjustments, whatever it is. And so a big, big theme camp for me was like, what's going to get me back on track after I go 2-0 or 3-0 walk a guy. And, and it kind of boiled down to, I need an external focus. And that took, you know, test and trial and, and, and failing and maybe having a little bit of a, a rough live BP. But as of, as of recent, it's really, really clicked about, okay, it's 2-0 need an external, need, I need an external focus rather than, let me think what, let me go back in, in my thoughts about what did DeGrom say? And it's like, you can't do that when you're on the mound. It's about getting the guy out, getting the ball over the plate. Um, so yeah, for sure. So when you say like external focus, are you, every time you're struggling, Hey, I got to look at this spot in the dugout to refocus. I got to do this with the ball when I'm off the mound. What, is, what, what are you talking about when you say something like that? Yeah. So when I'm on the, when I'm on the mound, um, we call it being either over the rubber or being over the plate. And when I'm throwing in bullpens and, and playing catch and, and, and in very low stress environments, I'm thinking over the rubber. Like I'm thinking kind of what is my body doing? Let's create some rhythm, um, you know, like timing, things like that. But once you get into the game, it's, it's about being over the plate because it ultimately you're going to get guys out by throwing the ball over the plate, you know, like nothing you, it's not going to happen by being over the rubber. And so big thing for me is just like I said, picking, picking a target, whether it's been like, okay, I'm missing, I'm missing arm side up and in to, to a right-hander. It's like, okay, like let's throw it at the the catcher's right shin guard, like, or I'll call the catcher out be like, Hey, like low, lower target, like it'll get there or just walk the guy. It's like, you know, for me looking at something that's going to be in every, every big league stadium, maybe it's the foul pole, just, looking at the foul pole and so that's my only focus and it's like move on to the next pitch um and so yeah it's it's just it, for me a bit it's just moving on to the next pitch and and for me it's ex, an external focus helps me do that the easiest and that mental part of the game it's something so many people overlook and don't think about but on a pitch to pitch basis it's just as important as as the physical stuff i, I love hearing how much you've learned just in this camp because in 2019, after you get drafted, you played a bit for the Gulf Coast League Mets and you came up to Brooklyn and pitched for the Cyclones uh, in, that, in that run. But it's been since then that you haven't played competitive ball. And you had you went to the alternate training site last year. You did instructs in the fall and now camp. It's been a year of learning. How, how are each of those three different for you, like going into it and coming out? Because you're, I'm sure, a whole new guy than you were back in the fall of 2019. Yeah, I think it's I think it's honestly all about making adjustments. Like when I showed up to Brooklyn for the alternate site, I didn't have much of a changeup. And now my changeup is one of my favorite pitches to throw. And it's sometimes my go to. It's it's some I threw it I threw it more than I threw my curveball in my last live VP because it was just it's it's been clicking as of recent. But again, it's it's been that I had to take the time and take the outings and the bullpens and the the catch play and stuff with struggling and not really feeling it and it was like i said once that one cue clicked once that one grip changed whatever once it clicked um it, it changed everything for me and in brooklyn and it was like wow i really have a solid third pitch it's not kind of like will it be there will it will it not it's like no i know it's gonna be it's gonna be there it's a solid third pitch like i can i'm gonna get guys out it's not even it's not just average like i can i can get guys out with it um, and then in instructs, it was like, okay, cool. Like I've, I've solidified my three pitches. Like let's, let's try to be uh, more efficient and a little quick to the plate and let's focus a little bit on the, on the running game. And so, you know, when I showed up to big league camp, it was like, how do I make adjustments quicker? And so it's, it's all about continuing to adjust and continue to learn. And for me, like, I just, I don't, I'm not the type of person to just show up and be like, yeah, I'm good. Like, I don't need to learn anything. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy with where my three pitch mix is at. Like, like I said, you know, I'm, still learning like how can i how can i have a better curveball you know like i, I want to learn and so uh like i said it's continuing to just make adjustments for for when the real game time starts it's that's 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 when it matters right now it's really important for me to learn and and develop and go through those kind of ups and downs but again once the games start then the regular season for minor league ball like i gotta take everything that i've learned and just get guys out i can't be thinking about maybe what I would be thinking in the bullpen or a live BP or something. It's like, nope, the only goal here is to get outs. Maybe I do it with one pitch. Maybe I do it with all three. But the goal is how can I get guys out rather than, you know, like in in, in my one of my first couple live BPs, I think I threw like five change-ups in a row because DeGrom was like, hey, like if you need to get guys off your fastball, just throw five change-ups in a row, throw six change-ups, throw, throw 
multiple of, of your off speed because they're going to be thinking he's not going to throw a fourth one. Okay. He threw, he's not going to throw a fifth one. He's gonna, and it's just, I don't, you know, if a guy hits a home run, it's like, great. That's okay. It's just a live BP. It doesn't really count. I'm working on my craft in the regular season. It's it, you can't do that. It's you're winning for your team. You're competing. Um, and so I think for me, it's constantly making adjustments and knowing that when the regular season comes around and the lights turn on, it's all right, everything we've learned. Great. Let's put it to a use and like, let's get, let's get guys out. What would you say is the status of your arsenal right now? You came out of, you know, high school with a plus fastball plus curve. The changeup was a work in progress, but it seems like you're excited about it. So your, th- your mix, your three pitches, where would you say each one stands right now in your mind? I think they're all three really solid. Like I think a big thing that in uh, Brooklyn, I, again, the thing I needed to iron out was just fastball consistency. Um, I am an analytics guy. Like I like looking at the analytics about like, why did my fastball get hit today if I'm throwing at the same speed and why didn't it, or was it, uh, you know, where I was throwing it, whatever. And so for me, it was just consistently getting backspin behind the ball, focusing on my, my vertical break or my ride as I would call it. Um, and I feel like past couple outings really ironed that out. My fastball command has been really solid. Um, curveball again, it's been really good. It's been spinning a lot. Um, you know, I, I have pretty good command of it. Honestly, my curveball right now is the thing that I'm, that I'm kind of working on the most in my bullpens because it's solid and it, it, it can get guys out, but it's just not really where I want it to be. Um, and again, like my changeup for me, it's just consistency. I don't pay attention to analytics on my changeup because if it's getting swings, then that's all I care about. But for my curveball, I do care about what the analytics are like because I can create a more efficient shape and play it better off my fastball if I throw it a certain way. Um, and so again, I, I think for me, it's always going to be, it's always going to be learning and it's always going to be constant adjustments. You know, I think that's what the game of baseball is all about. It's constantly adjusting, constantly adapting to the environment, the ball, everything. Like you're just, you're constantly learning. I think that's cool how you can even break it down by pitch. Like you focus more analytics on one of your pitches than the other. It doesn't have to be a wholesale strategy. You can even tinker with it specifically depending on what you want seems seems like you've grown a lot since draft day and doesn't seem like that long ago but at the same time i'm sure for you it does seem like a long time ago what would you say is the biggest change for you either physically mentally emotionally from the day you you found out you're going to be a met to us talking right now what would you say is the biggest change in you um I would say probably the biggest change is just the confidence that I have. Um, You know, I knew when I got drafted, it's like I got three, three solid pitches to, to above average plus pitches. And then, you know, I've, again, I've tinkered and changed a little bit. And so I I don't, my, my pitch arsenal, I think is, is obviously uh, evolved and gotten better, but the biggest thing for me, and I, and it's going to continue to be like, this is just being confident that, you know, going from high school to the GCL, you get those butterflies of like, all right, well, I'm facing real hitters now. And then you get real hitters out and you're like, okay, like, cool. And then you go to Brooklyn and it's like, I'm facing now above average hitters for then what I was facing in, in the GCL. And you get those guys out and it's like, perfect. And then it's like going back to Brooklyn. It's like, I'm facing guys who are really close to the big leagues, have big league time, big league, you know, rehab guys. Like this is really going to test me. And then it's like, wait, I got these guys out. Like in, in, I wasn't stressing about it. Like I just had to be myself and, and, and throw strikes. And, and, and then now it's like coming into big league camp. It's like, well, you're going to face more consistent talent than you would face in like a Brooklyn sense, because you guys, you got guys coming up and down, but now it's like, you could be facing in a live BP, the heart of the Mets order. You could face Pete Alonzo, Jeff McNeil, Conforto, Lindor. And that's just a casual Tuesday for a live BP that you're going to throw. So it's like, Oh wait, like, my stuff plays and it's like it's that it's that feeling of just like wait I can like I can be there like it's attainable that obviously when when you get drafted you're like that's where I want to be but you you have those kind of questions and and you're like well you know does my stuff really play like how what is it going to take for myself to really play and then it happens and it plays out like it, it has kind of for me and obviously I still have a really long way to go but it just instills that confidence that it's like It could be Lindor. It could be Conforto. It could be Babe Ruth. Like I'm going to go to war with my stuff and I don't have to worry or I don't have to be concerned about will it play? Will it not play? It's like, I know if I can, 
execute my game plan that I'm going to be in a really good position um, often. You know, obviously things are not going to go. I'm going to execute a really good pitch and and a guy is going to hit a two run home run or I may throw I may execute a really bad pitch and I might get a rollover double play. That's the game of baseball. And so it's just kind of understanding that, you know, my stuff plays and you just got to be confident in it and just go after the guy. You know, I, I think I originally was like in my first outing against the Nationals or my only outing, my, my the big league outing, I really felt like I had to be pinpoint perfect around the zone. And when I look back at it, it was like I barely threw the ball over the plate, like really over the heart of the plate. But yet I'm throwing to guys like Conforto and such. And it's like I threw a one one fastball right down the middle and he just took it. And it's like, you know, it's it's, it's like like the Grom said, like, don't overcomplicate things like hitting is really hard. It's a very hard thing to do. So it's like go after go after the guy with your stuff. It's probably the biggest thing. That's some Tuesday at the office going through that heart of the Mets order and feeling good about yourself coming out the other end. So pretty good day of work getting down in there in Port St. Lucie. One thing I remember when you did get drafted that you said, and, and I kind of hear you talking about it now, you're figuring it out, was you, you don't want to do what other guys do. You don't want to be someone else and go down that routine. You said, you know, you want to be you. So now that you have a couple of years of pro ball experience and all this training you've had in the last year, what makes Matt Allen, Matt Allen? Good question. Um, I think for me to be like true to myself and for me to just be myself, like a big thing I've been working on here is just being uber consistent, whether it's a bad outing, a good outing, a good bullpen, a bad bullpen, it's like stick to the day to day. I felt like kind of young Matt would be like, ah, I didn't have a good bullpen. I need to change something. Or I didn't have a good outing. I need to, I need to change something when it's like, no, you didn't really, you don't need to change anything. You just maybe weren't executing pitches at the right time. or You didn't go after the guy you pitched around and you were a little slow. Um, and so I think for me, just kind of understanding that about like being myself is just every day being the same person, whether I have a, lot, a bad outing, a good outing, be the same teammate, be root for the guys that I, I really hope to, for them to succeed. Uh, just be a, be a good guy in the locker room and then just continue to work, just work, work, work. Like I'm a workhorse. And just because I have a good outing or I go four four shutty with 10 punch outs, it's like, that doesn't mean the next day you get to take it off. It's like, Nope, I'm going to take it the same way that I just had throwing four innings, giving up four runs, walking three. It's like, it's the same next day. Sure. Maybe I'll, I'll have a, need to kind of execute a little gift, a little different game plan, tweak a little things. But for me, it's just consistent, consistent to be the best consistent me. I just need to be consistent, do the same thing day to day, be the same guy, be the same workhorse. And again, just try to get 1% better every day. How soon you think you could make the show and actually carry your weight? That's a, that's a, that's a question. I, I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's just about developing. And like I said, I've said the word consistent probably a hundred times, but just being a little bit more consistent. Like, I think that's probably the biggest separator and um, that's kind of out of my hands and the Mets have such a great staff and such great coordinators and, and front office that they're going to know when I'm ready and they're going to, they, they've challenged me up until now. And like, I need that. I love, love being challenged and they're going to continue to challenge me and, in different ways when maybe I, I don't know if I'm ready or I have, again, those kind of butterflies about, you know, double I, triple I, whatever it is, big leagues, but you know, they're going to know, they're going to know when I'm ready. And, and I think for me, it's just about being, uh, being consistent. I don't think it's a stuff thing. You know, I've heard from, I've heard many times this camp, it, it's not a stuff thing. It, it's not your stuff doesn't play in the big league. I've heard, I've heard more times than not your, your stuff plays in the big leagues and, and you will be successful but the biggest separator between like a DeGrom and, and a young guy is DeGrom obviously is uber crazy stuff, but he's consistent in the zone. You know what you're going to get out of him. You know he's going to have solid outings. He's going to compete for his team, even when he's not feeling it, even when he's a little sore, a little tired, whatever. And I think that's probably the biggest separator is from what I've seen, a lot of guy, a lot of young guys, including myself, you're going to have those really good outings and really and you kind of ride the roller coaster rather than DeGrom's just kind of riding these, these little, little bumps where it's like good outing, you know, it's, it's just, it's very consistent. And I think that's probably the biggest separator. 
Well, we can't wait to see you get back to competitive play. I'm sure you've been itching for it and chewing, chomping at the bit to get back to facing some guys in other uniforms and games that count. And it's going to be a fun ride to see where you go from here. Um, before you go, Matt, I do want to ask you a little bit about spring training life away from the diamond. Uh, you ready to chat a little bit about what that was like? Let's do it. So big league camp, what was the thing routine wise, schedule wise, amenities wise, what was the one thing that surprised you the most of being at your first major league spring training? Let me think. Um, I would honestly say how much time I had to myself. Uh, you know, I, I love being at the field, but I just found myself like, they're not going to baby you. They're not going to make you do, uh, you know, like in the GCL, it was like, Hey, you're going to do 50 ground ball. Like you're just, you're going to hammer it out. You're going to go, 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 go until you're like so tired that you're like, Oh, I can't wait to just lay in bed. Now it's like you get your work in, then you're done. That's it. They're not going to baby you. They're not going to, they're not going to hold your hand. It's like, if you need, if you need to run today, you're, you're going to run. Like if the trainer say, Hey, what do you think you're going to do today? It's like, well, I think I need running. Or you could say, well, I'm a little tight. Like, I think I'm just going to take it to the house. And so for me, I, I just found myself getting my work done, being as, as efficient as I can, then asking probably to do a little bit extra and saying like, hey, can you watch a couple more pitches? Like, can you hit me ground balls? Like, can, can I just do like, can I, I'm going to run a couple extra sprints or whatever. But I think the biggest thing was just how much time I had on my hands. Last spring training obviously got cut really short. So I was only there for a little bit. But again, like it's just, it's extremely efficient and you just, you feel, you know, you just don't feel like you're babied. You know, you feel like you can be a man and, and you're treated, you treat it so. That's the thing with spring training. It's early days, it's hard days, but it's a lot of free time too. So what, what were you doing in all your downtime once you got back to your place or when you had a few free minutes, how would you spend that free time? First probably week or two i was still trying to get my body acclimated to like the, the 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 running the working out the throwing like that's probably a super underlined thing about spring training that I, that's probably another good thing i probably should have answered with this the previous question just how your body takes a hit and every guy that i know coming into minor league spring training i that that I've talked to a lot. I've, I've stressed to them like, Hey, I thought I was in great shape. I worked my tail off this off season. I was not like, I, I, you, you still, you're still going to be tired. Your arm is still going to take a hit. Like that's normal. That's okay. So for the first two weeks, I think I just, I, I tried to take naps. I tried to sleep. I tried to just do any kind of recovery. I could foam roll stem, whatever it is for the first two weeks, just really heavy because it really does hit you. First day, maybe not so much, but it just compounds and compounds and compounds that you're sore from the lift and the the lift and the running the previous day because early in camp they're having you do both. Like now it's like one or the other, and so then when your legs are sore, you're gonna throw your bullpen and like then your arm is gonna take a lot of the hit because your legs are not underneath you, so you're not gonna move as efficient, and be in as efficient positions, and so your arm's gonna be sore. Your arm's gonna be sore, and then like and and all of it's normal. Um, so I think honestly for the first two weeks, I just tried to like lay low, just be in my room and just be, be as, as relaxed as possible and try to recover as best as possible. Do you get to have any fun video games, watch movies, hang out with any of the guys away from the field at all? So I, in the past, after that first little, after that first little bit, that's when I started to play more video games. I was probably watching movies at during the first two weeks anyways but that's when i really started to like seek a relationship with relationships with the guys really get to know people uh we're not supposed to be in each other's rooms or anything like that but just like even going and sitting outside by the pool and just like talking or maybe getting some dinner to go and then just eating it outside like that's been uh, a big thing as of late um that i've started started to do is just try to be you know with other guys and and it's been great Who'd you click with most away from the field with Jacob DeGrom? Obviously you're going to go to him to learn about pitching, but who did you find you just had a good vibe with maybe that you weren't expecting that you met down there? Yeah. So, uh, everybody in minor league camp was all is, has been, or it, I say minor league camp, everybody on the minor league side, which is where I was. And, and when, when you do PFP's bullpen, you would just walk over to the big league side just for COVID and try and space people out there, use both locker rooms. 
um, on the minor league side, everybody was so cool. So nice. The older guys, like they didn't treat me like a young guy. Obviously they're going to bust, bust me up a little bit and, and crack jokes and, and do, do different stuff just to mess with me. But like, that's all normal. But at the end of the day, everybody's so nice in Brooklyn. I talked to a guy of Riley Gilliam um, and we kind of hit it off a little bit, but outside the field, not so much. Uh, we just, we didn't talk as we didn't talk as much, but when we were at the field, we played catch every day. We were like, Hey, how'd you feel? What are you thinking? What's your cue? Whatever. Um, but as of recent, him and I will get dinner. Like I said, we'll sit outside. Like, we'll just, we'll just, you know, do as much as we can with the protocols, like still being safe and everything. But, um, like I said, Riley Gilliam and I have kind of really hit it off outside the field. Cause it's been, it's been good to, he's an older guy. He's, he's been to triple a, like he's on the fringe of being in the big leagues, got the stuff. Um, and you know, for him, he's his wisdom and, and just, you know, his, his, his presence for me has just been really good about like when we're off the field, like let's focus on off the field. Like let's take baseball aside. Let's, you know, like how's the family doing? Like, let's talk about things aside from baseball. Cause when you're there, you're already thinking about it so much. You're doing so much. Like, let's just take a break and separate the two. Uh, another good one who was at Instructors here, Marcel Renteria. Um, him and I talk a lot at the field, not at the field, but really everybody. Like, there's plenty more names, plenty more guys that that have been so good, and I probably came across here and there. Um, but like I said, it's it's been good. You've mentioned a couple times that some of the veterans would rag on you for being a young guy. You're in big league camp as a teenager still. Here's your chance for a little bit of revenge. Was there ever a time when some of the older guys would like make a movie reference or talk about an old player or like a song you didn't know? And you're thinking, man, these guys are really old. Like, what are they talking about? Did it ever go the other way? Oh, hundred percent. Like it would always be like, Matt, you know, like who's, you know, like we'd be working out or something. And it'd be like, Hey, who is this? And it'd be like, no idea. And then and it would be like, Oh, well, this guy's from, you know, whatever. 1978 blah 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 and again i'd have that i'm like dude you are how old are you again like you know just stuff like that um no everybody everybody's really good one of the things that one of the guys do is he would always put bananas in my shoes like <laughs> I, like i'd show up and it'd be like six bananas and six like just lined up in, in in my cleats or something like that um and so like i just started taking them and putting them in random people's lockers like i just put it under their hat or in a different person's shoe just like I'm not taking this. Like I'm going to get back at somebody. Um, and they wouldn't tell me who it was. You still don't know. I, I know now, uh, Daniel Zamora told me today, like, Hey, that was me. Cause again, I was telling him like, I don't know who this is. Like I really th didn't think it was him. I'm like, I don't know who it is. Like it's one of the clubbies. Like it's probably Mazika. It's probably like one of these guys, like the next day I find it in my pocket and it's like the <laughs> banana bandit. Like he took a Sharpie and like wrote on it or something like that. And I'm, I don't know who it is. And today he told me, he's like, yeah, it was me. I was like, I was the one telling you, like, I was the one telling you, like, oh, it's definitely not this guy. So. The quiet. banana bandit. I love it. They were, I'm hoping they were still in the peel. They weren't. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were still in the pool. I, I, I was wondering, I went in there one day. I'm like, I need a banana before my bullpen or something. I went in there and there was no bananas in the little tray. I'm like, oh, I wonder why. I've probably th thrown away like 35 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they all ended up in your shoes and then somewhere yeah. else. Oh man, spring training. That's the thing you got to do in spring training. It's long days. You got to keep yourself entertained. And now we know Daniel Zamora, the banana bandit. I love it. Yeah. Matt, we're looking forward to your whole trajectory and everything you got coming up, man. And hope to see you at City Field uh, under those lights uh, sooner rather than later. Thanks so much for catching up with us. Yeah, for sure. No problem. Enjoyed the, enjoyed the talk. Right. Thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.